Hey guys, welcome to Water Baby Tarot. So I had a channeling, another song channeling. <sighs> I'm still like, <laughs> um, sorry, it was just a really crazy one. And I'm just still, I was just still a little speechless. So I just, I took a few minutes and was like, oh, we're going to do a video. Oh, we're totally going to do a video on this one. We might even pull some, actually, no, we will be pulling some cards. Like without a doubt, we're going to pull some cards. So We've been in some crazy ass energy. Probably sick of hearing me saying that. I'm sick of saying it myself. Can't wait till March, honestly. <laughs> I think uh, when Saturn moves into Aquarius, which is going to be on March 21st, I'm going to be doing a big video on that. Um, I think I think everyone's going to feel a little bit better. Um, anyway, so this song channeling that I got, no question, no question, uh, it's about counterparts. And you guys know I don't do that much counterpart stuff anymore for obvious reasons. I still haven't put out my video explaining counterparts and twin flames and differences and all the misconceptions and all that stuff and why it's important to actually not fixate on those labels and all of that. Like, please don't fixate on it. Like, it's it's good that we talk about it. But for a couple years, people got really caught up in like, in the attachment of it or talking about it. Um, and I, I won't lie, like I was I was in that group. I was in that group too. There was a reason for it. It served a purpose, um, but that purpose for being that attached to the labeling of it is no longer needed, no longer necessary. But of course, it's still, it's still a thing, right, obviously. Um, anyway, that's a whole other video. I will be doing a video on that. That's actually gonna be the next Bomby Spirit episode. Anyway. So the channeling, sorry, I'm like, you're like, can you just say what it is already? I keep you guys going like, what is she gonna say it? Okay, so you guys know, for those who are new, who don't know, um, my guides give me messages in all kinds of ways, but one of their favorite ways to give me messages for the collective is through music. Um, some And sometimes I don't even know the artist or the song and I have to just like go, go and Google whatever lyrics they're giving me. And I know their lyrics because it's in a very like um, sing-songy way that they give give them to me, so. They were giving me these lyrics. I'm like, what is this? I'm like, have I heard this song? I'm like, it sounds familiar, but I don't think I heard it. Um, I kept I kept hearing, I feel it coming. I feel it coming. I feel it coming. And I'm like, oh God, what's coming? <laughs> um, so I look it up and like, right, like just super quick on Google, The Weeknd. And I actually, I'm not, a, I actually don't listen to The Weeknd that much. I'm sure they're great. I just, you know, I don't listen to that much outside of like my genres. But anyway. Uh, so it was the weekend. I feel it coming. So I'm watching the music video and every second my mouth is like hanging open. I'm just like, holy fucking shit. So if you've never seen that music video, I'm linking it below. The whole music video takes place like in the galaxy. Let's start there. Um, <laughs> doesn't even take place on earth. Um, she, okay. So I, I just have to, because I'm still like, my mind is still blown. Um, He's just, he's on a planet somewhere. I don't know why I thought it was probably Mars. I don't know why I thought that because it was all rocky. It did not look like Mars, but I kept thinking Mars. Anyway, it's a music video. Who cares, right? So he's by himself. He's like, I feel it coming. I feel it coming. And he's talking about, you know, obviously like the woman he's lusting after. And then she appears as light, as energy. And I was like, oh, this is like about astral shit. Um, and they're like doing their thing and they're all into it. And then you start seeing all these different shots of like around the galaxy and things like that. And then you notice they're, they're showing shots of an eclipse. I was like, oh my God. Um, they're showing shots of an eclipse and they're going at it, they're going at it, they're having a good time, whatever. And then the eclipse happens. It's that climactic moment at the peak of the eclipse and she turns into stone. And it's like, what the, and things start falling apart. Things start exploding. He starts turning into stone. And then there's a snake, a snake, Kundalini, le <laughs> leaving her stone-like remains. And he's literally chasing the snake as he turns into stone and things just obliterate. So then the, then the music video ends and I'm just like, keep in mind, I like barely even knew the song. I didn't even know who it was from. I never saw the music video. It's just crazy how these channelings, when they come together like this, like the things that are in it, right? And at the end, when things are obliterated, what did it look like? For those who've been on my channel for a long time, following all these counterpart updates, it looked like Winter Wonderland. I know, I'm just like, I, I seriously had to watch it a couple times because I was like, am I really seeing this shit right now? Anyway. So I know my energy's all amped up. I'm just, I'm just, I'm a little, that was like, that was just a crazy ass message. So what is this about? Well, I want to pull some cards to see what we get from that. But just innately from watching that, it's really, <laughs> sorry, I'm still like amazed. 
I feel like that obliteratory stuff at the end was actually alluding to what we've been what we've been experiencing in this eclipse energy, right? Um, we've been going through some deep ass transformative energy, a lot of um, purging of shit, getting rid of shit that's not necessary. Um, but the lyrics, though, the whole song, it's it's literally about the anticipation of what's to come. That's the whole song. And the whole time that they are actually engaging with each other is basic, basically an astral form, basically, right? And if those who've been in counterpart situations for a while understand that that's just like, that's really the bulk of your interactions is in the other dimensions, right? Not necessarily in the 3D. Um, and then the end with the snake leaving, I just like, it's the chasing of that Kundalini divine energy, right? Um, now, like I, like I said, I don't like to get fixated on counterpart stuff. I really don't. I don't think it, I think it's really easy for people to get too caught up in chasing that one person. And what have I always said? I've always said, not always, but like, you know, what, come <laughs> When I first started, I didn't understand this until I, I, you know, had to go through some experiences that when it comes to counterparts, it is a frequency. It is not a person. That frequency was leaving that person, right? So we might be playing another round of musical counterpart chairs, okay? <laughs> okay? For those who are really, really new, you're like, what is she talking about? So for those who are really, really new, like, and I'm talking like brand new baby new waivers, right? There was a period of time months ago where we went through a really crazy shift and it became evident that counterparts are frequencies. They're not people. OK, there's a whole my whole theory. There's my theory behind it. And it's just my opinion. It's just my theory. You don't have to take it as fact. It's just what I've observed from my own experience and from witnessing other people's experiences and certain downloads and channelings that I've had um, through source and my own guides and other people's guides as well so playing the game of counterpart musical chairs basically people will start to meet others that are you could consider your 2.0s counterpart that's what i refer to it as um i had a i had a 1.0 and my 1.0 couldn't quite get with it <laughs> couldn't quite hang in the frequencies couldn't quite go through that ascension process and you know just for lack of better terms became unplugged, I got a 2.0, right? So like, that's what I mean. So we're about to go through a round of that, of the counterpart musical chairs. That's what I think was is going on in, in most of that message. And that anticipation of that happening, people are already feeling it. You might actually see your next counterpart in the dream space relatively soon. Um, but just keep in mind that we're, you know, we're all in a different spot here. So it's, it's just a message that I was getting for the collective, but this is definitely regarding counterparts. No way it's not. Um, so yeah, let's dive in and see, but that's just innately what I was getting from the channeling and with the message behind that. Um, yeah, so let's do it. <laughs> so let's do it. But I, yeah, I definitely think we're going to start getting, uh, counterpart 2.0s, 3.0s, wherever, wherever you're at in that arena. And not everybody is just those who, you know, fall in that group of you've been orphaned by your, by your other counterpart here. Okay. Um, God, I don't even know where to start. I'm like, so I got a hit with a lot of energy when I was getting that message. So I'm just a little, like I'm a little human battery right now. Oh, or should I do the galactic deck? I was going to do the shaman. You know, it's interesting. I haven't been wanting to use the shaman deck that much, but the galactic deck is really calling me. Um, no, I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with the shaman deck. I'm going to stick with the shaman deck. Like when I saw that at the end and I was like, is that a snake leaving this, this woman? Is that a snake? And then I was like, wait, what is he doing? And like, totally he's reaching for the snake. It's like, oh, I get it. Totally get it. Okay. All right. I know I'm overwhelmed. Sorry if my energy is overwhelming you. My energy is really, really like surging right now. So you guys can probably really feel it intensely. I apologize if that's triggering you. I apologize if that's like too intense for you. I'm trying to reel it in. Oh, can you elaborate on that channeling for the collective? Like, I, she literally, I'm sorry, I'm like, I keep going through the music video in my head, and I'm just, like, amazed. She literally porned, a, a porn? <laughs> appeared? I don't know what I'm words I was trying to say. She literally appeared as energy. I just, like, wow, I should watch music videos more often. Okay, anyway. 
Come on. Mm. Any messages pertaining to the channeling, please? Any messages pertaining to that channeling, please? You guys might be seeing snakes in your dreams. They're telling me that. You actually might be seeing snakes in your dreams. And of course, it depends on where you are in your journey as far as like your kundalini awakenings. And well, mostly you've probably been through that already if you're here watching this and understanding what I'm saying. Um, but you might be seeing that a lot. Or like if you are doing your own tarot readings or if you're going to tarot readers. Because um, like there are some cards that like have like, you know, symbolisms, right? And some more than others. There's also decks like um, like the Lenormand deck that actually has like a snake card. You might be seeing just more snake synchronicity symbologies around. I believe that's really just why. They're just telling me that you're going to be seeing that, experiencing that. Any messages for the collective pertaining to this channeling? Let's see here. Ooh, we've got the tree of life. Okay, I like that. 58. Uh, that breaks down to a four. Stability. Oh, wow. I just heard merge. And it's like the way like those... Uh, why can't I speak? I'm just overwhelmed. Um, and you see like it's all like twisting up and it's supporting itself, right? It's like two separate trees almost supporting itself as one tree. Oh, crap. Um... Oh, interesting. Stand still in the heart of sky. Uh, 52 breaking down to a seven and 24 breaking down to a six. Heart of the sky is a manifestation energy. And you see how she has all that like cosmic galactic imagery behind her, around her. Stand still is like a hermit energy. It's like sit down, meditate. I just heard astral. Yeah. Okay. That, well, that would make sense with these two cards, actually. Um, there's going to be a lot going on in the dream space. Please pay attention. Please pay attention to who you're interacting with, what they look like, how those interactions go, how you feel when you wake up. They're telling me how you wake up, how you feel is going to be like a huge indicator. It's going to be really important to pay attention to that. Meditation has to like, has to happen, has to happen. They're saying, don't get lazy. <laughs> they're excited. Oh, this is, they're like, they're actually really excited. Um, Don't let the meditation get lazy in the coming months. They're, so, they're telling me months. I know that sounds like, I know. I'm just saying for those who are not like big on meditating, they're saying do not get lazy about it. Make sure you do that. Make sure you sit um, and meditate because it's going to be really important for your manifestations and what's to come. And so you can understand and see what's coming and what you need to do. Oh, okay. Let's keep going. I know I'm like, I'm all tensed up now. Any other messages for the collective regarding this channeling? Oh, they're they're excited, but they're like they're a little they're a little sassy. They've been kind of sassy all day with me. Um, don't take this personally. They're, this is just how they're saying it to me. Um, you, <laughs> they're saying that a lot of you have been like asking for help or asking for answers, but you don't sit still and and be quiet enough to listen for the answer. I know, that sounded very like, you know, I know, I know. I'm just a messenger. Okay, so I got one other card here. Oh, shit, it's the eagle. <laughs> 16 breaking down to a seven. So as far as numbers go, we have two sevens, we have a four, and we have a six. I just like to shout about for those who look for certain synchronicities as far as numbers are concerned, or you're really into numerology. But the eagle is very much like a, like a seek, strike, snatch very direct, very clear sort of energy. And it's interesting, we were just talking about, so you understand what you need to do, what you need to do, what you need to get done, what you need to do on your path, get it done. And the only way to know how to do that is to be quiet enough. <laughs> Shit, I'm sorry guys, it sounds so blunt. It sounds so like, ah, um, to be quiet enough to listen for the answers that you've been asking for. That's literally how they're saying it to me. I'm sorry. I like. I feel like that was just such a harsh, harsh message, but it is what it is. And on the bottom, we do have the staff. 51 breaking down to a six. So you have two sevens and two sixes here with a four. So that's kind of interesting. The staff is a very masculine energy. Very, very, very masculine energy. A lot of you have been feeling this pressure within yourself and, and that's been really hard and it's been taking a lot of your focus and we've been talking about that for quite a while now but it, it's gotten to the point where 
<clears throat> it's thrown a lot of you out of alignment. So it's just that need to like realign. It's the need to realign, refocus, because there's shit that has to get done. There's stuff on the to-do list that has to get done. Things have to start moving. Things have to start progressing. The staff is all about forging. The staff is all about taking an initiative. <coughs> My throat just closed up as I was talking about that. <coughs> oh, shit. Hold on. Mm. The staff is all about taking initiative. It's like I said, it's very, very masculine. I mean, look at how that, how phallic that looks, right? <clears throat> this next message is not for all of you. Only for some of you, you'll know who it's for about leadership. Um, some of you are natural born leaders, but through whatever you've experienced, <clears throat> Through the course of your life, any kind of setbacks or, you know, hang ups, whatever, what have you, we've all got them, we've all got them. Uh, you haven't been allowed, not allowed, but they're correcting me. Uh, they're saying, do not say that. Um, it's not that you haven't been allowed to step into a leadership role. You haven't, you really just haven't allowed yourself to do it. That's really what it is. It's not that no one else has allowed you to do it. Some of you have kind of put the blame on others that they didn't allow me to do this or I couldn't do this because of them. At the end of the day, you are capable because you're a natural born leader. And it's really just up to you to step into that leadership role. It's really just you and your own initiative. Sorry. I know. Harsh messages. It was like such an amazing, beautiful little channeling. And now I'm like, okay, I feel like we're getting a talking to, which I'm not, I'm not really loving. But it is what it is, right? Masculine energy is stepping up and stepping forward is also what they just told me. This this always reminds me of, ma of divine masculine energy. Always. When, I, when I'm using this deck, it's like the only one that really says that. Well, no, the blade is very masculine in, in a divine way too. But this is like the epitome of divine masculine energy for me. Um, stepping up. Divine masculine energy in a healthy, aligned way. Being able to step back up a little bit here. Um. We've all been processing a lot of stuff relating to our masculine energies on an individual level. And of course, as a collective, we've been seeing that too. And it hasn't been pretty, <laughs> right? Let's be honest, it has not been pretty at all. Uh, it's been really hard. It's been a rough road for, for everyone that I know personally. I don't know anyone who's just been like, who's been smooth sailing, happy rainbow sunshine since, since November. I don't know. I don't think I know anyone who's been in that boat, but now it is time for those rebirths to happen as far as our masculine energies are concerned. Some of our, some have already been through this. Everyone's in a different boat as far as energy is concerned because they'll work through it differently. But some have already done this and the bulk, I feel like the bulk of people, the most of the collective, um, now stepping into that. Now stepping into that. You're bringing your masculine energy to a healthier place to reintegrate and align with your feminine energy to go Figure out what it is you're supposed to do because the answers are there. They're trying. To, our guides are trying to tell us what the answers are. They're trying to tell us what the answers are. And some of us just can't listen right now or just are not listening right now. And then go out and snatch, strike, seek. Just go out and, and put that into action, okay? I like this energy though. Like I said, this is the first card I was getting merging with this. I feel just support system. It feels really nice. I feel like some of you guys are finally coming into the awareness of how supported you are by the universe and how supported you are um, by your guides. And for some, even like your, your actual like 3D earthly family, biological family, most of you that's like your soul tribe family, um, finding those who really are there to support you versus those who are not. A lot of you have already been doing that and weeding people out. A lot of you are past that already. But there is a support system in place here. And there is some kind of merging that's supposed to be happening. And this is definitely also relating to the al realignment and reintegration into feminine energy to have that balance, right? As as one unity consciousness. I, got, I was like, I don't know where my, where my words are to try to communicate that. Um, but I like this. I really like this. It's time to reintegrate. It's time to get realigned. It's time to get our focus right so we we can get shit done get shit right so we can hear the answers to get shit done okay wow okay um i do want to break this down though let's break it down because that's like the fun part uh let's do tree of life that support system energy oh man i'm tired okay i'm um, gonna do radiant wise for this one i was gonna do monthlies and then i got sucked into this channeling 
Talking about the tree of life. Talking about the tree of life. Talking about the tree of life. Sorry, they want me to clarify what I was saying before. They're talk they're giving me more information about it. So how I was saying like we're gonna be playing another round of, of musical counterpart chairs. Uh that's definitely gonna be in place for a lot of people, but for those of you where your counterpart hasn't necessarily like, again, frequency, not person, right? It's just the blueprint frequency. It's like a blueprint tribe is like the way I see it. Um, where you haven't had necessarily a full on orphaning happening because not everybody goes through that. <clears throat> there will be um, a deepening, a more intimate deepening between you and that individual that carries that certain frequency. Um, but honestly, I feel like for the chunk of you, I feel like for most of you, it's it's a round of musical counterpart chairs, okay? Meeting new people with this blueprint frequency, okay? All right. Tell me more about the tree of life. <clears throat> Tell me more about the tree of life. Suspension. What? Suspension. Some of you have felt like you've been in a state of suspension. You can say like hangman mode for those who speak in tarot card terms. <laughs> a lot of us light workers speak in tarot card terms, which I find kind of funny because always when I'm talking to like my family members who don't like watch tarot or anything and I'm talking, they're like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, sorry, I forgot. You don't know. You don't speak tarot card. Um, anyway, some of you have really felt like you've been in some kind of like weird suspended limbo or just state of like your your interactions with, with the other side, your interactions with the other dimensions, with spirit, with your guides have kind of been on freeze mode. Some of you have felt like that. That's changing. That will be changing. Tell me about the tree of life. Tell me about the tree of life. I'm gonna watch that video again after this. I like I still can't get over everything I was I was seeing. Uh tell me about the tree of life. Ooh, we got the moon in reverse, Piscean energy. Could also be Cancerian for me as a reader. Full clarity. Full clarity here. And clear yeah, a lot of you are also understanding what tools you have at your disposal, what resources you have at your disposal, realizing that you have a lot more than you thought you did as far as what you need to get done or what you want. It's like, we all need some kind of backing to do anything, right? Unfortunately, like, nothing's really free in, in any energetic sense, right? Everything takes energy, some kind of form of energy, whether it's physical or our own personal physical energy, there's always some kind of energetic cost to create something, right? That whole destroy to create, right? Process. Um, a lot of you are realizing you have a lot more to draw on than you thought you did. So if it's like, if you need people, if you need supporters, you have a lot more than you thought. Um, if you need, I'm like trying to think of what, I'm trying to think. Uh, what are good examples? What are good examples? Oh, if you needed money to do something, you're realizing it in, you don't need as much as you thought you did, so you actually have more to draw from. Your bank of energetic capital investments is larger than, than you thought. And that I think most people are in that boat because most people, I think, have a hard time getting out of that programming of scarcity or out of that programming of uh, restriction, right? Anyway, just so you guys are coming aware of that. Tell me more about the tree of life. Tell me more about the tree of life. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. I'll show you guys in a second. Just want to get all the cards out. Tell me more about tree of life. Yep. Oh, running away from me. Tell me more about the tree of life. 
Okay, four cards came out. We have the Eight of Pentacles, Virgo energy. Three of Wands in reverse, Aries energy. High Priestess, Piscean energy, also Gemini for me as a reader. Seven of Pentacles, Taurian energy. Yeah, this is reevaluating what you have. Reevaluating re what you have. The Seven to the Eight of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles is like taking a look at what's been done so far, what you've gotten out of it, and what you can do moving forward. That's the Seven of Pentacles. Eight of Pentacles is getting back to work, analyzing, researching, figuring shit out. In between that, the Three of Wands in a verse is like, I'm not getting what I expect. I'm not getting what I expected. I'm not getting what I wanted. Nothing's happening the way I expected it to, or no longer trying to wait on something to happen. High Priestess is all about that intuition, that hidden knowledge, um, our higher selves even. But that's definitely what I, I was already picking up on, right? It's like, you actually have a lot more than you thought you did. And yeah, maybe something wasn't going the way you expected it to. Maybe you felt like you were put on pause, especially like Three of Wands in Reverse with the Seven of Pentacles, but you're not anymore. You understand that now. You're not anymore. Some of you have been in such limbo that you're like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Some of you have literally been like, I don't know what the fuck to do. Like, things are on pause. Are my guide's even there anymore. Like, some of you have been that far, that feeling, feeling, let's say feeling, feeling that far detached and falling under, like, the pressure cooker of Capricorn is what I've been calling it that it's just some of you felt a little lost and that is okay. That's okay, that happens. Some of you felt a little lost, but you're coming into understanding what resources you have moving forward and what your support system is and what encompasses your support system to do whatever it is that you want, okay? And like I said, support system comes in all kinds of forms. Your guides, your ancestors, source, uh, your current tribe here in, the, in 3D, even even your tribe in the other dimensions that you've never actually met in the 3D, right? A lot of my light workers have have quite a few of those. Um, <clears throat> and when it comes to support system, support system, excuse me, I'm talking so fast. Um, it's also about energe the energetic bank that I was talking about, right? Um, and energy, it can be in the form of money. It can be in the form of your physical effort. It can be in the form of time, right? All of that. You have a lot bigger stronger support system than you realize that you had overall energy we do have five of swords in a verse i love i love this aquarian energy no longer feeling defeated by your current situation or your current energy or the pressure of the capricorn pressure cooker which i feel like has just been putting a lot of us in this kind of energy in the first place right um five of swords can also be a little bit of like a tug of war again feeling like that like what do i do i thought i knew what i was doing am i supposed to do this do i do this now i don't know can I do that? Do I have enough to do that? Like, a lot of that inner conflict, right, that's done. That's done. At least coming up, I feel like that's done. I don't feel like this energy is right now. Um, I feel like it's 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 coming. I feel like it's going to be mostly in, like, I feel like, you know, it might be coming with the full moon Leo. I still had a channeling for the full moon Leo that I didn't make a video on. I was like, maybe they're not ready. Maybe I won't do it now. I feel like the moment's passed. Anyway, um, this could be relating to starting in the full moon Leo, but I feel like we'll feel most of this in March, in the end of uh, February. New moon is also going to be in Pisces at the end of February. That's going to be nice. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for that new moon. <laughs> the new moon in Pisces is just going to bring a lot of like, a lot of just soft, creative, loving, compassionate energy. And a lot of us who have been in like freeze mode that I was picking up on, um, that's going to be thought out. That's going to be totally thought out. Um, and then we'll head into March where we're going to have heavy, heavy rebirthing energy. Mercury retrograde will be ending in March. Thank goodness. Um, and then the pre-shadow, I think, even ends before April, if I'm not mistaken. And then we have Saturn going into Aquarius, just making things even lighter. So, yeah, I, I feel like it's mostly when that energy is going to be, when this energy is going to be taking place. Anyway, let's keep going. You have to be quiet enough to listen. <laughs> You guys be quiet enough to listen. You guys got to meditate. Please pay attention to your astral experiences or your dream space experiences. You will get your answers. And for those who are meeting new people <clears throat> with the counterpart frequency, I'm just going to call it the blueprint counterpart frequency because that's what it is to me anyway. Like I said, just my viewpoint. Doesn't Don't have to take it as fact. That's my viewpoint on it. Um, you'll be meeting these people. And I feel like a lot of you are going to be meeting them for the first time in the other dimensions. Okay? And then the... Then you'll know what to do and how to seek, search, strike, and go about whatever it is you are supposed to do personally. And that's going to be different for everybody. Everybody's got a different mission. Everybody's got a different purpose. Everyone has a different blueprint 
right? Everyone has a different blueprint. And that's also the point of these counterpart connections. It's to not only break us down, which is the, well, no, I'm not, I'm not going to go into that. I, I was just realizing I was just going to explain all of like my theories behind counterparts and twin flames and the misconceptions, but that is an entire video within itself. So I'm not going to do that here. Anyway, get ready for that because that does need to happen. Um, I mean, I guess we can clarify this. I feel like after clarifying the tree of life, I'm like, I kind of already understand the gist of what's going on here. Um, mm, We'll do Heart of Sky. We'll do Heart of Sky. See what we can get off of that. <clears throat> and do Cosmic for this one. Play with the Heart of Sky. Ooh. Some of you guys are going to get a taste of the other dimensions that you have not been to yet. Fun. Okay. Tell me about Heart of Sky. A lot of you guys are asking me about 5D. We're like, we're passing 5D. We've been, we've been started, we've been passing 5D. <clears throat> Tell me about the Heart of Sky. Tell me about Heart of Sky. Oh, interesting. We have Prince of Pentacles in reverse, which is like the Knight of Pentacles in reverse. Virgo energy could also be Earth. I just heard water. It's fire. So interesting. Could be, you could have water in your chart, or this could be just relating to like the new moon Piscean energy. That's a hell of a lot of water. We're going to have a lot of water with us because of Piscean season anyway. But anyway, I did hear water. I just feel like this is, oh God, I feel like this is the anchor, like acting as like the anchor from keeping us from hearing our guides and hearing what we're supposed to be doing and like and you know get it receiving the messages we're supposed to be receiving i feel like this is the anchor of like deterring us away from that it's an energy of lacking confidence uncertainty yeah it's it's the it's it's this energy once you realize that you have more of a support system in place than you initially thought that's going to help you but until you sit down and get realigned with yourself you're not going to get rid of this anchoring energy you're not <clears throat> talk about the heart of sky some of you are also going to realize some of the other blockages that have been keeping you from understanding what it is you're supposed to search seek and strike on <laughs> in your personal missions talk about the heart of sky I'm sorry, this card is like reminding me so much of the music video. It's not even funny. Like there's a couple scenes where you just see like all of this. It's kind of freaking me out, actually. Um, let's keep going. Play more about the Heart of Sky. They're showing me the Six of Cups. There's no, we don't have Six of Cups out here. They're showing it to me. Um, <clears throat> I just feel like that's just the shit that makes you happy. You know, Six of Cups can be a very nostalgic energy. It could also be about the things we loved when we were kids, the things that just made us so happy, the things that made our souls happy. Six of Cups can encompass, it's Sun and Scorpio energy, but it can also encompass past life energy, karmic energy, memories, but it's good stuff. It's the stuff that gives us warmth and fuzzies, warm and fuzzy butterflies and all of that. It's like, that's the that's the way a lot of you've been wanting to feel and a lot of you felt like that's been out of your reach. It won't be out of reach anymore. It won't be out of reach anymore. <clears throat> Tell me about the heart of sky, which even saying that I want to say is an illusion, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, I, I want to say that that's an illusion. It's I don't think it's ever been out of reach. Seems like it has been. It's going to be easier to see it now. It's going to be easier to grasp it and understand that it's always there. It's always there to grab. Anyway, getting off my soapbox. Tell me about the heart of sky. Wow. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so we're seeing some blockages or more details on some blockages that these are for you guys. Three of Pentacles in reverse, Capricorn energy. Seven of Pentacles in reverse, Taurian energy. And then we have a King of Swords. <laughs> Aquarian energy it could also be Gemini or Libra with the nine of swords in reverse. King of swords is usually very clear headed here. Um, 
over energy, we do have the six of swords, more aqua energy, lots of swords and pentacles. Actually, these are only swords and pentacles attached to this. Clarity about the 3D, clarity about, our, about our the tangible things in our lives, about our work as well. Um, it's almost like some of you will be seeing the the 3D. Um, I don't know what else. I don't know why I like to do that. I'm like, because everything, all these terms, I'm just like, yeah, it's the 3D. I don't, anyway, ignore me. Um, ignore my quirkiness. <clears throat> just more clarity on how the universe works. How the universe works, how these dimensions function. Um, and just understanding that they're all just various levels of evolved energy. That's how, That's how I look at it. Like, I look at every level of dimension like going higher up. It's just a more evolved, efficient way of ener of the existence of energy. That's all. Like 3D is very primitive and slow, but let's not get into that. Anyway, Six of Swords. This is moving into peace and moving on to missions, to this the search, seek, strike, forge, create, whatever you got to do, whatever you, you're supposed to do personally, right? Because you're getting the answers to figure out how to do this, right? <clears throat> this is what's interesting to me, though. <clears throat> Darn it. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> we have the Prince of Pentacles in reverse with the Three of Pentacles in reverse and the Seven of Pentacles in reverse. This is like total not moving, not going, not not being able to deal with people. Um, someone's not, not cooperative with you. Um, wasting of time, wasting of efforts. I mean, some of the some of this is just total blockages, like total mental blockages of I can't get people to work with me or people don't want to be on my side or I, you know, if I do this, it's going to be a waste of time. If I do this, I'm going to fuck up. If I do this, it's going to be a mistake. Like all that's going to go away. This is the anchor energy of like keeping, keeping you guys, keeping your minds full um, so that you guys can't hear or see or perceive the messages you're supposed to. So just quiet your mind, meditate, make sure you meditate and empty your head. Okay. <clears throat> that's really just the key to receiving messages there needs to be space right <laughs> there needs to be space in order to receive these messages and the only way there's going to be space is if you empty out and clear out that space for these messages to take its place right did not mean to rhyme <laughs> anyway then we have the king of swords and the nine of swords in verse getting rid of worries getting rid of fears emptying the brain emptying the mind the mental space so that you can be clear to receive these messages to understand what you're supposed to do and go ahead and do it very assertively and confidently, okay? Oh, all right. So I don't feel the need to, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I don't feel the need to clarify any further. I just feel like this is something that, you know, that's just running in the background for a lot of us as individuals. And once we get up and go and, you know, get to work and get busy, which is what 2020 is all about. 2020 is about innovation and bringing in stability for individuals and for the collective and for Gaia herself. Um, and that takes a big effort of people to do and create a lot of things, right? That's that's the whole, that's the big bulk of the energy for 2020. Now, in doing that, you will come across people who are going to help you do that, who are going to help you on your missions, help you create, help you innovate, help you get to whatever it is you're supposed to be doing according to your blueprint, according to your purpose, right? And within that, there are going to be counterparts. And some of you, like I said, this is going to be a, mu a round of musical counterpart chairs and whatever it is you're going to go do, you're going to be surprised on who you meet, okay? All right, guys. Intense channeling, really kind of cool energy. Um, I will be posting the, the link below for the song or the music video so you guys can go ahead and watch it. It's so funny, too, because, like, just talking down, just chit-chatting with you guys. It so was, like, reminded me of Michael Jackson, you know? <clears throat> Excuse me, that's totally what it reminded me of, like the way he was dressed and the style of the video. And I was like, oh, like it kind of like made me miss Michael a little bit. Anyway, just had to share. So I'm going to go and I hope you guys found that insightful and helpful. And I will see you guys soon. Don't forget to check out Patreon, Vimeo and Instagram. And I will hopefully get to at least one monthly tonight. This kind of took a lot of my energy because I got a little obsessed with it. Anyway, I'll see you later. Have a great night. Namaste.